So today we will be talking and discussing about the uh, general introduction of the orthodontics. We will be talking about the rationale of treatment, why we why we uh, get the orthodontic treatment, and what are the benefits of the orthodontic treatment, how uh, it will be beneficial for us, and what are the different potential benefits for the oral health related quality of life. So before doing this, what uh, you should be knowing. Okay, what exactly is orthodontics? Where is the slides gone? So orthodontic, what is basically the orthodontics? Orthodontics is basically the branch of the dentistry in which we will be studying about the growth and development of the technician. Because as the general concept of the orthodontics, we know that in this orthodontic treatment, we treat the malocclusion, we treat the crooked teeth, and the we, uh, but this is the this is the layman concept. You are aware of this that in addition to the crooked teeth, we can correct the position of the jaws as well. How we correct the position of the jaws by the growth and development. We can restrict the growth of certain areas of the jaws, and we can enhance and regulate the growth of different areas of the jaws. So before treating anything, we should be very clear about it. What is normal? And what is abnormal? What is in the range of normality? You understand? What is in the range of the normality? And what is out of the range of normality? So do you think like in the orthodontics, we should be very clear understanding of the features of the normality. So the normal features, uh, we should be very clear about the growth and development. So that's why the orthodontics is a branch of the dentistry, which is concerned with the facial growth and development and development of the dentition and occlusion. Then we come to the second part of this uh, definition. Then we go for the diagnosis, interception, and treatment of occlusal anomalies and the jaws anomalies as well. Uh, the, now the change, now the name has changed to orthodontics and dentofacial orthopedics. In the dentofacial orthopedics, we can modify the growth of the jaws as well. Uh, in the orthodontics, as the name says, ortho mean to align to straighten, dontics mean. Uh, around uh, about the teeth. So in the definition, there are two areas. One is orthodontic is the branch of the dentistry, which is concerned with the growth and development of the dentition. And secondly, it comes to the treatment part. So for doing the treatment, we have to have a good understanding of the diagnosis. So what we do the diagnosis, we have the cephalometric analysis, we have the cast analysis, we have different kind of analysis uh, for reaching on certain um, conclusion so that we can label a certain condition with reference to a certain disease. For example, we can say it's a high angle, it's a low angle, it's a proclined teeth, and this has bolt-on discrepancy, this has like eight, eight millimeter of arch line discrepancy. We land on this conclusion that, that this patient has got eight millimeter of uh, arch line discrepancy by doing some analysis. So diagnosis is a key feature of the orthodontics. We do the diagnosis, then we can do some interception, like what we do in the uh, interception mean we can intercept and stop and uh, can interrupt the developing problem and as well as the treatment of the malocclusion so in the orthodontic if i summarize we do the uh, we do the growth we understand and read and study about the growth and development and secondly we treat different malocclusions and we do uh, interception of developing malocclusion by a good diagnosis Okay, so that's about the definition of the orthodontics. So what is basically the malocclusion? In the orthodontics, we correct the malocclusion. So malocclusion is a term used to describe dental anomalies and occlusal uh, traits that are deviated from the ideal occlusion. So as I said in the start, in the growth and development, we see what exactly is in the range of normality? What are the features of the occlusion? How the, what is the late mesial shift, early mesial shift? What are the features of the primary dentition? What are the features of the uh, early mixed dentition? What are the features of the late mixed dentition? So we have a clear understanding of the features of the dentition because we once we are very much clear about the cephalocordial gradient. Okay, so by having the understanding of cephalocordial gradient we know that this part of the jaws grow later and we will be, will be studying about the features of the growth and development. So 
we have to have a good idea of about the Malick ligand. Malick ligand means that it is uh, it is the deviation from the features of the normality. What you see in the Malick ligand, you see overjet, overbite, crooked teeth. You see uh, abnormal bore relationship. You don't see crust to fossa relationship. So we have developed the ideal ligand. Then we have developed the range of normality. Okay, let's say if we say that the ideal Malik, uh, ideal occlusion is two millimeter, then we can have a range of normality like up to four millimeter. It's like uh, the overjet is considered normal. Then we have some uh, uh, range of um, normality like up to twenty five percent overbite is considered normal. But we know what are the red flag signs? What are the areas where definitive treatment is required, like a traumatic bite? Okay. So the malocclusion is a deviation. In the malocclusion, we have the variation and the anomalies uh, of the dentition within the arch or intra arch. Okay, in the intra arch, a maxillary or mandibular dentition may not be in a uh, proper position, or you may have intra arch abnormality like arch dent discrepancy. Arch dent discrepancy is an intra arch problem, and uh, the in inter maxillary problem is overjet, overbite, uh, chromatic bite, or cross bite. Etc. So we come that what is the rationale of orthodontic treatment? What comes in your mind? Okay, uh, uh, why why there is increased demand of the orthodontic treatment? You see, the situation is the situation is that the uh, most of the orthodontic treatment patient comes to us with the problem of the overjet or crooked teeth or they have the problem of the aesthetics. In addition to the aesthetics, aesthetic is basically concerned with the quality of the life. If you have a good aesthetics, nicely aligned teeth, you might, might aware of this that you might have heard that there are more chances and possibilities of getting the good job and uh, getting uh, good proposals for a girl and uh, for getting the more attention in the society. So oral health related quality of life means the quality of life is being uh, improved with the nice appearance. You know, it's a very common that all the people are working toward to having a smart look. We have different kind of haircuts. We have different kind of uh, maneuvers to enhance the aesthetics of the face and, and the body. So the teeth has a very important role in the beauty. And, you know, for the girls, you know, to be very frank, the beauty is considered a very important aspect of the personality, apart from the education and everything else. So oral health related quality of life means that with the good appearance, with the good appearance, especially or, or, oral um, health related, you could have improvement in the quality of life. For example, quality of life means that if you are having a severe uh, toothache in the lower six, you will not be having a comfortable sleep. So this is all we, we can say that the quality of life is impaired because of the apparatism. For example, a, a, a person goes for a job interview and because of the crooked teeth, he is not very pleasing. And as compared to the other uh, person who is having equal qualification and equal uh, caliber, is that a nicely aligned teeth. So he may not get the job with a crooked teeth and the person with a very nice appearance and uh, smile, he may get the job. The difference is that the quality of life is being appeared. For example, there's a girl who gets rejected from a, for a proposal because of the bad smile aesthetics. Okay. For those patients, the quality of life is changed because of the of the dentition and it's not about the smile oral health quality of life means it's not all about, all about the smile it's all about the overall condition for example if a patient is having a chronic gingivitis or periodontal problem so he may uh, be having the problem over the period of time he has a uh, uh, chronic pain in the jaws so all the time his life will be disturbed he will be annoying he will be disturbed and have a constant pain in the dentition or for example, if the patient bite or chew anything, 
and the and the food get enlarged in the interdental spaces okay the if the food get enlarged in the interdental spaces and uh, after eating uh, he keep on um, uh, removing the, uh, the lodged food having a bit discomfort so we can say that the quality of life is being impaired by the oral health related issues so uh, our area is that okay, how we can benefit the patient or the community by the by this particular kind of a treatment that quality of life can be improved by the orthodontic treatment and by increasing the aesthetics or by uh, doing some help in the orthodontic so we are discussing about the benefit of treatment versus risk uh, we in this is the basic introductory lecture for the orthodontics and we'll be talking what is the benefit of of the treatment and what are the risk of the different treatment one uh, why we get the orthodontic treatment for for two reasons one is basically the aesthetics that the patient will be looking more pleasing and the other area is improving the functionality improving the functionality means that the uh, many a times we say to the patient that uh, the treatment will continue for two years and after one year the patient get to very happy with this with the treatment but we need we always be struggling to explain to the patient that the uh, uh, cusp to fossil relationship or the uh, ideal occlusion has not been established so in order this should be the objective of the orthodontic treatment once we have achieved all the ideal aesthetic and we have satisfied the patient definitely we have to improve the function for the function mean you have to develop a good overbite you have to finish the patient with good, good cusp to force relationship all the premolars should be nicely occluded in the uh, uh, in radial spaces or in the uh, central fossas all the cusp of the upper teeth should be seen in the buccal imbrages or in the central fossas uh, it should not you should, there should not be a cusp to cusp relationship in a in, in a similar way you should be having the incisal guidance or the balanced uh, or not the balanced or the good uh, curve of sp and wilson to have the normal occlusion normal functionality so and as well as this third uh, major objective of orthodontic treatment is having the good stability so along with the aesthetic which is majorly the chief complaint or the chief concern of the patient we being the professional should be looking after uh, the ideal functionality and we should be looking after the ideal uh, stable position because uh, nobody should be wanting a kind of a treatment that after the after the orthodontic treatment uh, that all the features of the uh, malar occlusion come back so we'll talking about the benefit of the orthodontic treatment along with the uh, typical features i said that uh, uh, along with the aesthetic what why we should uh, be having orthodontic treatment so there are certain other indication which necessitate the uh, orthodontic treatment. for example localized periodontal problem localized periodontal problem means that if the patient has the dentition in a way that you are having a trauma form occlusion okay let me just stop the recording so regarding certain conditions when we have trauma form occlusion for example in this case particularly what you can see over here that the upper teeth is occluding in a way that it is uh, moving or uh, the lower sentence has a labeli so what is happening that all the remaining dentition is very appropriately positioned within the alveolar housing and because of this abnormal position of the teeth upper and lower this is this features it has malocclusion and you have see cross bite over here you see cross bite of lateral incisor and the abnormal position of teeth this central incisor is just not only having the atrium because of the abnormal contact of the teeth but also it is pushing the lower incisors more labially so this tooth is being pushed out of the alveolar housing okay this teeth is being pushed out of the alveolar housing because of the abnormal position of the dentition so what is happening how the orthodontics can be able to uh, a favorable for the periodontal condition because if you see trauma form the occlusion trauma form the occlusion very commonly seen in the anterior crossbite patient 
what you can see over here, the, the teeth are very abnormal in the position and the upper central incisors is hitting the lower central incisors in a way that is, it is pushing and throwing the lower central incisors out of their velar housing. Can you appreciate the difference in the clinical crown height? You see the clinical crown height is whatever the crown part visible in the LPT. Anatomical crown is whatever uh, uh, is the, uh, on whatever area there is enamel. It's called anatomical yes. crown and clinical crown is whatever the amount of the, for example, I can say for this canine, the clinical crown height is lesser than the anatomical crown height because of the partially erupted canine over here. Here you can see the difference between the clinical crown height of this central incisor and the adjacent central incisor because of the gingival recession or what is called recession. What is called recession if the gingival margin is below than the cervical enamel junction. Here you can see yeah. the gingival margin is over here. You can see the gingival margin is over here because this tooth is being pushed out of the alveolar housing because of the trauma form occlusion or the crossbite. Here you see the orthodontic treatment is beneficial and it is helping for the correction of the periodontal problem. How it is helping, it has stopped the trauma form occlusion, not only stopped the trauma form occlusion, but it had also corrected and stopped this ongoing atrium. So this ongoing atrium is stopped and the patient is like, like this, okay, at the end of the treatment. So my point is this, that localized periodontal problem can be corrected and helpful by orthodontic treatment. Along with this, you could have a situation like tooth impaction. So uh, do, do you know that uh, at the age of seven, eight or nine years, if we see some red flag sign, if you see some abnormal position um, of the dentition or anything red flag signs, I will describe all this in, in the, uh, my lectures of the interceptive orthodontics in, in few weeks. You will see that if there's some red flag sign, we definitely go for the radiographic examination and screening of the dentition. And if you see a one tooth is interfering and intercepting the eruption of an adjacent teeth, then this may lead to the impaction. We can define the impaction that if the tooth eruption is impeded by the physical obstruction, by it could be by the soft tissue like uh, thicken and fibrous gum. It could 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 by by the uh, by any pathology. It could be by due to any supernumerary teeth or any other teeth or any abnormal ectopic eruptive teeth that is preventing the eruption. So on the radiographic radiographic examination, but that we will do on the um, on the screening so you would re you would realize that if a tooth is not allowed to erupt because of any supernumerary teeth or because of any uh, physical obstruction because of uh, any abnormal position of the, abnormal position of the teeth just like you see in the transposition in the partially transposition teeth in uh, if the tooth is being uh, if the tooth is stopped from erupting because of the uh, position of an of a tooth that is interfering its proper eruption into the uh, position in the oral cavity. So that's how the orthodontic treatment could be helpful for the proper eruption of the teeth because you can create a, a, a proper passage for the uh, proper pathway for the eruption of the tooth. Here you can see a few things like that, that the uh, orthodontic treatment could be helpful for a highly motivated patient. Uh, please note my word for a motivated patient, orthodontic treatment could be helpful and could be facilitating for eliminating the plaque retentive site. Please note, carefully note my words. I said that orthodontic treatment can be helpful for the motivated patient for the elimination of a few plaque retentive site. Please note my words. This does not mean that what I have said, I have said a very political statement. I have said two critical words, a motivated patient, and I uh, use the word plaque retentive sites. Okay. If you read the literature, if you see the books, they say that the uh, orthodontic treatment could, could be helpful for the, for the, uh, prevention of the caries. However, it's not the truth. With the orthodontic appliances, the plaque retention, they are more likely, like, likely 
that the uh, plaque and calculus get deposited around the teeth and you could have some problems uh, because of the plaque retention they're more the, with the fixed appliances uh, the dentition the patient is more susceptible for orthodontic treatment however if you have a situation like this that you have a crooked teeth that with the crooked teeth there's a common sense that says that with the crooked teeth you would be having a more plaque retentive site and as the plaque retentive sites are increasing there are more susceptibility and chances of the caries okay so how orthodontic can be helpful and the common sense says for the nicely aligned dentition for the nicely aligned teeth you would not be having a plaque retentive site so the teeth can be uh, cleaned by the natural movement of the cheeks and by the natural movements of the tongue okay so if you read the book laura mitchell you will see that uh, this does not mean that if you nicely align the dentition then you would not be needing brushing and there are less possibility of the caries however the common sense says with the nicely aligned dentition you could have a more a lesser plaque retentive site with a crooked teeth you have a more plaque retentive site so for the motivated patient for example if the patient is very motivated then he could be able to clean all the plaque retentive sites of the crooked teeth please note my words again if the patient is very much more motivated then there is no difference between the nicely aligned teeth and the crooked teeth with the with the well motivated patient he he would be cleaning all the uh, then crooked dentition with the equal efficiency got it okay yeah okay so i am uh, saying the political statement that with the orthodontic alignment of the dentition you have aligned the dentition and you have uh, created a, 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 a situation where there is a less plaque retentive site and with the crooked teeth you are having a more plaque retentive sites so there would have been a more susceptibility however this variable there is a huge variable that is dependent upon the motivation of the patient if there is a crooked teeth but the patient is very much motivated then you would be having a uh, different results as compared to the to the nicely aligned teeth okay moving on to the tmj dysfunction here again uh, if you have if you see like the, there's this condition at the situation uh, with the certain features of the malocclusion there is more susceptibility i i repeat the word uh, there is more susceptibility for the for few individual uh, that they could have some problem with the uh, with the tmd so as per the latest evidence by the luther et al they say that the orthodontic treatment neither cause nor cure the tmd if you have a malocclusion then it is not it could not cause tmd or if you correct the alignment or uh, with the braces the temporal mandible uh, dysfunction problem cannot be arise because of the orthodontic treatment i repeat with the malocclusion the malocclusion cannot be the cause of the tmd temporal mandible joint dysfunction disorder secondly if a normal patient comes to you and get the treatment and with due to the orthodontic treatment the dentition or the orthodontic treatment cannot cause the tmd so orthodontic nor the malocclusion cause tmd nor the orthodontic treatment cure the tmd is clear so yes. uh, however some susceptible patient some susceptible patient the certain feature of the malocclusion make them more prone for tmd okay for example if there is a displacement so with the displacement for example the with the features of the displacement you could have situation where the tmg tmg would be more loaded or with some asymmetric uh, chewing for example if patient has uh, cross fight on one side and the normal cluing on the other side so the one side of the joint would be more uh, functional and would be more overloaded as compared to the normal side so you could have a situation that this may prone and push that particular patient toward the more susceptibility of the tmd this is a, a great debate on this and i do not want to go in, into the full details because we cannot label 
this malocclusion the cause of the tmd because tmd is a multifactorial problem this point clear because okay. tmd because tmd has a has the etiology that is that is uh, caused by so many factors even if this patient has malocclusion you cannot label the malocclusion as the cause of the tmd however this malocclusion making this patient more prone and susceptible for the tmd anyways moving on so these are the problem localized periodontal problem can be solved dental trauma like dental trauma means for example if the patient has lip incompetency and the patient is presenting to us like in the age of 9 10 or 10 years so those patient are more prone for the uh, dental trauma because of the lip uh, because of the lip incompetency so with orthodontic treatment especially with the functional appliances you would be protruding the mandible in the forward position and all the time with the patient would be trying to keep the lip together and lip would be in the lip incompetency so with the competency of the lips there would be lesser chances for the uh, uh, dental alveolar trauma so that's why the orthodontic treatment especially the functional appliance treatment would be helping and preventing from developing the uh, traumatic condition in a similar way the tooth impaction can be impact, uh, prevented the caries uh, could be uh, not i'm saying prevented uh, for the motivated uh, individual there would be lesser plaque retentive site in the nicely aligned teeth so there is a rationality but this caries reduction should not be the reason for orthodontic treatment i'm clearing my word the uh, the caries reduction should not be the rationale and should not be the reason for the for doing orthodontic treatment because if the patient has a poor oral hygiene you can you should not prescribe orthodontic treatment to get the teeth aligned uh, to get the um, nice aligned teeth however how you should be moving you should be motivating that patient for the uh, for keeping the good oral hygiene and the the consensus say that if you develop the nice aligned teeth you will remove the plaque retentive site so plaque retentive these are the features that could be benefited from the treatment so these are the these are the occlusal anomalies where the evidence suggests that orthodontic correction would provide long term health benefit what are those condition that the crowding that is causing tooth to be pushed out of the alveolar housing leading to the gingival recession periodontal damage caused by the traumatic overbite anterior crossbite increased overjet leading to the increased cause of the dental alveolar trauma these we are talking about the the uh, benefit of orthodontic treatment in addition to the aesthetics we have said we do orthodontic treatment for the correction of aesthetic or for the correction of the functionality for the functionality we have these certain indications where if we have a crossbite if you see the crossbite treat it as early as possible the best time to treat the crossbite the the time you see the the time you see the crossbite normally the crossbite are not treated in the mixed dentition in the, in the primary dentition so Uh, in the mixed dentition the ideal time for the correction of the crossbite the first time you see the crossbite in the mixed dentition you start correcting them unerupted teeth they uh, all have having a, the risk of the pathology there are more chances of the developing this cyst and tumor because uh, of the so these are basically the benefits of the orthodontic treatment